It is Thursday, July 8th, 2021, and this is the iPhoneography Podcast. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Uh, I'm your host, Greg McMillan, and I am joined by my esteemed co-host, Dave Potter. How are you doing, Dave? Hey, Greg. How's it going? Not going too bad. We've had a good here. ton of rain here lately. Oh, uh, okay. Supposed to be a half decent weekend, and and uh, yeah, a little below average temperatures for this time of year. But no, okay, we'll take it. <clears throat> well, so, at least you're not you're not at least you're not baking like some parts where it's dangerous yeah, heat yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah, there was some pretty nasty heat out in the West Coast there. Yeah, uh, last week. So I'm pretty thankful for not having that. Um, uh, first of all, I want to say a big thanks to Joseph Ferreira for filling in for you mm-hmm. last week. And um, we had a good little discussion about the wide camera. Yep. Um, now, that discussion, <clears throat> it kind of went off in a few different directions. Um, we probably should have spoke more about the wide camera itself. Uh, as opposed to comparing it to other cameras, but that seemed to be the way we went. We kind of compared it to yeah. the ultra wide and and the wide. So, um, well, I mean, and, and truthfully, I would say truthfully, unless you get into the dingy technical details of the actual camera itself, which is kind of hard to do because each camera's or say each phone's camera the 12 versus the 11 versus the 10s versus the 10 they're making minor tweaks each time to yeah, where that's true yeah. you know like when the 13 and and heavy rumor is they're going to call it a 13 so they're saying you know well there's ios 13 so why should we we be afraid of the number 13 so they're going to come out with that that yeah, camera I don't, I don't think apple's superstitious about anything like that obviously no 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 and also that's a heavy Western mindset per se. And China's a pretty big, as far as I know, there's not the fear of the number 13 in the Chinese culture as there is in the Western, you know, Western European based cultures. So mm-hmm. it's, yeah. doesn't, it won't impact them as much. Also, I can't really see anyone saying, Ooh, I'm not going to get this phone because it's a number 13 phone. We've passed 13 phones. This isn't the 13th yeah. version of the phone because of, you know, the numbering system. So now I could see them doing it, but even this one where the changes in the camera and in, in the actual cameras itself seems it we will be bigger for the wide and ultra wide. It sounds like, and the telephoto will still be similar. There's still going to be tweaks to it. Oh sure. Even though even though this is the 13 is pretty much going to be a 12s in terms of changes. You know the body will look almost the same. There'll be minor physical yeah. differences, but unless you <clears throat> look hard or know the colors, you won't notice. But there's still going to be tweaks enough where, of course, it's going to be the best camera we ever put in an <laughs> we iPhone. Put in an iPhone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And. I, th- I think the that that's where the biggest differences is, are, are going to be physically. Um, yeah. Are they're talking about major camera bump and all this other stuff? Yeah. So, um, but that's you know we'll keep an eye on that kind of stuff and we'll yeah. get to that uh, yeah. as we go through the summer. Um, yeah. Oh, like and a- just let folks know, Dave, about yeah. your situation with your computer and what you're doing there. Uh, you're not in your usual spot by the looks of things. Well, I'm a little bit similar place, but different computer. Um, We've had to rejigger things a little bit. Uh, Normally, I um, do this on an iMac uh, with that big, beautiful screen right in front of me. But uh, we've had to move things around because Ruth had to use the iMac for her work. Uh, And instead of me unplugging it, hauling it, this is the one advantage of a laptop versus a desktop, even a simple unplug and plug it in it just works having to unplug lug up 27 inches of uh, aluminum plop it down the desk find room rehook everything up get it running and then at the end at the end of the day unplug everything lug it back downstairs plug it in so she can use it tomorrow i'm just going off my regular 
I, I know this may be a swear word for some people, Windows <laughs> machine. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so I'm assuming the, the, the camera on the iMac is bad. I mean, yours is better. They they improved it on yeah the, they really improved it yeah on the M1 iMac they improved it but the old Intel ones were crappy yeah they're only compared to what they should or... yeah yeah I mean they're better than some but even though it was crappy this webcam's even worse so um, I can actually tell on what I'm seeing coming back now if you're listening to this on a podcast. Who cares? I'm actually using yeah. the same mic and headset that I normally use. So that's not going to affect anything. Um, but I'm a little more, I can actually tell I'm a little more pixelated now than what I normally am. So hopefully, knock on wood, no audio hiccup or any weird stuff going on with the going off of an, and actually it's around the same age. They gave us this laptop at work around the same time I got the, I actually bought the iMac. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because recently I had some issues with it. And when we called, we mean internal IT support and myself yeah. called Dell and they said, oh, you're out of warranty. Um, what co- what account of cost center do you want to charge this correction to? And then all of a sudden I heard, uh, no, that's okay. Um, you're out of warranty. No, that's okay. We're not going to call. We're not going to do anything. We'll, we'll, tr- we'll figure it out on our own. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, okay, so the computer is three years old or so. Because <laughs> I know it's on oh, average wow. how long how long the service is. It may be Windows, but it does the trick, and you won't be able to put Windows 11 on it. So here goes. <laughs> oh, I don't even want but, to think about that. <laughs> yeah, we, we won't even go there. Um, no. So this this week we are going to continue with um, a quick little discussion on the telephoto camera. Uh, we're covering all the different cameras that are available mm-hmm. on the iPhone. I don't think we're going to do the selfie camera though. I think once we get this one done, we'll go to the ultra wide and then that'll be it. Um, because I'm I don't know about hopeful. you, Dave, but I don't take any selfies. <laughs> I take some, obviously, metal munching. Yeah. Um, but well, you know what? We can cover that. But you know what, though? I, I think we may want to hold off because I'm expecting, based on what they did with the iPad Pro, how they oh, upped yeah. the selfie cam on that, yeah. including for FaceTime, where it's basically mm-hmm. oversampling the image and only giving you a, a much smaller amount so it can do the auto pan and auto tilt yeah, and yeah. auto zoom, like the Facebook portal device. Yeah. Well, um, we may I'm, cover that I have, maybe I have you know, big once hopes. the new hardware comes out. I'm having big hopes in just around two months now. You know, it, it, it's going to be September. It, yeah. it, September equals new iPhone. I mean, ever since the iPhone... What was it four or four S when they switched from the releasing it at WWDC to the fall release? Yeah, it was it somewhere was, around uh, there. It was early, somewhere on. Around there, yeah, yeah, it was early, yeah. But September means new iPhone, so you're going to have the you know, the, the, the now, of course, the really good sites aren't going to point out, but you're going to have some sites saying, Oh, we have inside information from people who talk to the um. Um, you know, the back end channel, the, the you know, yeah, the, who, supply su- the supply chain saying that this, there's definitely the, the iPhone, the new iPhone has begun production. Like, yeah, new September iPhone takes a couple months to ramp up if you're going to have a few million on hand, which they want a few million on hand. Therefore, it's in production now. Yes. Oh, well, Shocking. Sure. Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> You know, this isn't the first iPhone where like three weeks ahead of time, Steve Jobs looks at and goes, I don't like this plastic screen. It scratches. Let's make it glass. And yeah. in three weeks, they, they, just, they call out the corny and make Gorilla glass. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, that yeah. doesn't happen anymore. <clears throat> yeah, they're, they're definitely in the production now. And uh, um, so, you know, that kind of ties into what we'll talk about after we talk about the telephoto. I'll touch a little bit on the iOS 15 beta, which I put on my 10s max because it's sitting here available. Um, and it's, I don't have to worry about having it on my daily driver. So, um, all right. So let, let's jump into the, uh, the telephoto camera. Um, 
uh, let's see here. We've got some discussion items here. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll start with a very quick overview of um, the differences between uh, the um, three cameras, just, just kind of as a review. <clears throat> so I'll go to screen share. And you can see my screen, correct? Uh, yes. I can okay. see your desktop there, yes. All right. So this here was with the ultra wide. And, <clears throat> and, the, and, the, the, new, and the new car. This is the new car, yes. Uh, we, we traded the RAV4 for a Venza. Um, had this come out, I just want to say that had this come out when we were looking at the RAV4, we wouldn't have had the RAV4. Um, we've had two different Venzas before and we really love mm. them. And when this one came out, man, it was a cat's meow. Um, so anyway, uh, this is the new Venza, uh, the blue Venza on Instagram. It was the, it was the blue Rav. I just changed the, the name. So it's the same account. And anybody that's following will still see it. And, um, so this was with the ultra wide and, uh, let me think. No, sorry. This is the wide. Okay. Uh, camera, the, the one that Joe and I talked about last time. And, you know, it's a typical wide angle shot. I was able to stand, I don't know, probably six or seven feet away from the car. And then this is the ultra wide where I was oh. able to move into about two feet away from the car. Okay. And, you know, my mom, Definitely. she's not tech savvy at all. And in, in fact, she's got a negative number for tech savviness. She couldn't believe how, how close I could stand to the car and get the whole thing in the frame. And uh, so, yeah, ultra wide is, I mean, it really distorts everything. The, the, yeah. the, the foremost feature of, of things come really up close and then they, it, they, they fade off into the distance really fast. <clears throat> and then this is with the telephoto. Um, oh, wow. Telephoto on my 12 Pro Max and it's a 65 millimeter. Right. And it gives you probably a lot closer, just like with, with all the telephotos that, that are on the iPhones, they give you a lot closer um, angle of view, I guess you could say, of what your eyes really see. So that's more like naturally what it, what it looked mm -hmm. like. Oh, excuse me. So um, mm -hmm. now yeah, this, for those this one you, actually looks like it could be in a brochure too. Yeah. Yeah. That's when it was still nice and clean. <laughs> We've been driving it through the rain up here lately and it's kind of dirty. But um, so for those listening on the podcast, um, go to the YouTube channel and have a look. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> so please, <laughs> ob obviously, you know, telephoto, you could stand further away and get the whole thing, get the whole car in the frame. Wide angle, you can step a little bit closer and then get the whole car in the frame. With a uh, ultra wide, you can step almost right up to it a couple of feet away and still get the whole car in the frame. And that kind of, but the, the wider the lens, the more distorted the image. So, you know, that's. Um, I would say the ultra right wide even has a fisheye look to it. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, Which cause... can be good artistically, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. It, for sure. it, it just definitely gives you a, a drawn out look to the car. Yeah. Um, but like you said, it's not, realistic in terms of you're standing two feet away from the car. This is what your eyes is going to see. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. The, like I said, the, uh, the telephoto gives you the most, <clears throat> excuse me, the most realistic, you know, uh, view. For, great. Just for people who are watching, can you put up the telephoto in the wide side by side or at the same time? Yep. Okay. Okay. Just the telephoto in the wide or the ultra wide? Yeah. Uh, no, just telephoto on the wide. Okay. Like I said, I think the ultra wide, unfortunately, there's so much of the, the fisheye look to it, the, you know, the, the bulbous front part that it kind of gets a extra distortion versus these two where, and also I would say one thing with the ultra wide is not everyone has what has it. Right. Where most people, I don't want to say, I would say a majority of people with iPhones have, at least in the last couple of years now, have a phone with a 
you know, we'll have a wider tele or wider um, telephoto. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just fumbling away at my computer here, trying to get them to go side by side. There. Okay. That's pretty close. Slaying the. There. Because one thing you'll note, one thing that you can notice. And trying to give a little description for those on audio. If you look at where the ba- the, the Toyota badge is in the car, if you look at the the um, the wide, it, it's actually protruding there, um, making it look like it's coming out at you. Now the ultra wide, it was very protruding, but even with the wide, you can tell. And I've seen the Venz in person. We actually, I actually saw uh, saw uh, one in live that's close to us. Mm -hmm. um at a shopping over the weekend a a new one like yours and the front does not protrude out like that (laughs) no 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 certainly not that much (laughs) no no so that's one thing that you know even if you don't have to do the telephoto not even if you're thinking about doing i'm gonna have to do a telephoto so i can zoom in get closer which is of course when you think telephoto i want to get closer i'm going to zoom optically versus digitally because of course it's going to look a whole lot nicer if you use optics versus digital but it also makes a difference when it comes to you know distortion when you're close to something and in terms of flattening the image and having these side by side can actually help us out you know in terms of comparing where if you look at the um for the wide angle if you look at the trees, not necessarily the far off trees, but just the closer trees in the background, they feel yeah. very, very far off. But if you look at the telephoto, even though the car is pretty close to the same size, the trees seem a whole lot closer. Yeah. Yeah. It really compresses so, everything in the image mm-hmm. that way. Now, the most extreme version I saw of this, and sometimes it helps to see the extremes. Um, because the differences are real shown are shown a lot better versus seeing where you have to only see a little bit of a difference was now this wasn't an iPhone. This is someone, a professional shooting with a, a DSLR with, I think a 500 millimeter lens. I think it was a oh, massive wow. zoom. It was a massive zoom lens, <clears throat> yep. but it was doing um, uh, city at night cityscapes with the full mode. But because of the massive zoom he was using, it really compressed and made the moon look mammoth. Yeah. And he even said, people are going to say this is a fake shot. Here's my iPhone recording me taking the shot so you can see what it looks like. It's because I had this massive zoom that everything gets compressed. And admittedly, no one's going to use Okay, no one should use that much of a zoom lens. A phys- I know there's ways you can hook up, you know, real, you know, the, the lenses to an iPhone. Don't do it, people. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but um, you know, that, that kind of, it makes it easier to see, wow, I didn't realize using a zoom lens would compress everything so much. Well, having a side-by-side helps too, where you can easily see the trees here or even the trees that are far off, you know, in the telephoto don't look as far off in the distance. Yeah. So it also, you know, in terms of, you know, if you're taking shots and you want to know which one to use, either the telephoto or the wide, you know, it kind of helps to know what are the effects if you use the telephoto or the wide. And maybe you don't, maybe you want to have that extra depth shown. In that case, you don't want to use the telephoto. Yeah, yeah, that's you right. Know, if, you know, if you want to make you, the things in the distance look far away, right? Then by all means, use a wide angle or, or you know, even more so the ultra wide if you have it. Yeah, um, yeah, and then reposition then look, yourself if you can. Yeah, yeah, and and that's the key thing to this too is I had to reposition myself for each shot because I wanted the car to take up the same amount in the frame. So right. with the telephoto, I was probably oh gosh, thirty feet away or more. And then wow. with the wide angle, I was up to maybe 10 feet away. And then with the ultra wide, I was at as close as, um, you know, two or three feet from right. the car. So uh, it, it just 
really um, changes that much going from one camera to the other. Mm-hmm. So, so that's our illustration as to <clears throat> how the telephoto compares to the wide and, and the ultra wide. Um, now, I, I'll, while I'm on the screen share here, I'll just pull up a few other ones here. For sure. Now, this was from my 8 Plus, and one of my favorite places to shoot. This is a river scene. Um, so for listeners of the audio, it's it's a river scene in the winter. The, the water's still flowing quite nicely. You know, it's not covered in ice or anything else, but there's ice along the edges, snow-covered trees and, and whatnot, and there's a bit of a drop in the flow of the water from, you know, it looks like about a foot and a half or so. Um, where the rocks drop to mm-hmm. another level. And um, <clears throat> it just, it, it really gives you, and it looks from it, f- a real quick glance at this photo will look like a black and white. And I've had people ask me if it's black and white, but it is indeed color because there's some little sticks and things in the river that that show the color that they are. And you can actually see a little bit of the green in the evergreens, but um, just the, aesthetics of the image it was taken with slow shutter cam so it's long exposure and um okay. the the uh if i'd have done this wide angle it just wouldn't have the same feel to the image like it just wouldn't have that um i don't know what the word is i'm looking for but i just think it looks better from the telephoto camera mm-hmm. um and oh no, you know, no it's real striking too and this is one thing we were, t- we were talking about things feeling far and close away with yeah. the telephoto, the difference between the up close branches and the far shore. Mm-hmm. It's kind of hard to tell how long of a distance that is. Yeah. And there's that compression factor again, right, yeah. Dave? It, it just, right. it just brings everything together. Meanwhile, that was probably, <clears throat> excuse me. That was probably about, uh, I would say 30 yards oh, wow. across from, wow. from the trees in the foreground to the trees across the river. I, I'm, I'm guessing it was around 25 to 30 yards. So that, that just, you know, that's another um, indication of how much it compresses the image. Right. And for a phone, that's a, that's quite the compression ratio or whatever yeah. you want to call it, you know? Yeah. Um, Especially when you have an image where the distance between the near and the far, you, it, it, all of it, is actually something you want to have the eye focus on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, um, this image here was taken at a place called the Grotto, <clears throat> and it's up. <clears throat> excuse me, it's up on the the Bruce Peninsula, north of where I live here. And that peninsula goes up, and it it separates Georgian Bay uh, on the east from Lake Huron on the west. So that'll give folks an idea of where that could be, but. Um, this was looking down off a cliff, which was probably, <clears throat> well, let's just say I would not want to jump off of it. Uh, I would say it was probably a, a hundred feet or more. Ooh. And, and this, this obviously with the, with the telephoto of my eight plus, and I just got my eight plus and I went up there and, and spent the day with a friend shooting these things, um, <clears throat> this area. And, uh, you know, the waves were crashing against the shoreline, but that water is that color up there. It's, it's just absolutely amazing. Oh. It's, it's like a bluish green kind of color. And, um, you know, I was really uh, ecstatic about shooting up there. I'd never been up that at this particular place before. But looking mm. down, uh, you know, you can pull in a lot of detail with the telephoto. Um, you know, if I'd have used the wide, I would have got, you know, probably half the bay and, uh, it just goes to show you that the telephoto is is a, an amazing camera. Yeah. Um, and again, wow. if you're just listening to the audio, uh, I, I just can't put into words how to describe how it looks. But, um, you know, and the 8 Plus, it wasn't a bad camera. It's the same one oh, you have oh no. in the 10, right? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, but you know what, though? I think the 10 has a little better aperture than the 8 Plus did. I think it was a 0. 0.2 difference. I think it, that's why they were... It might be minor, but I really think, like you said, it, it, it's an old it's an old phone, too. You know, the, the 10 and the 8 Plus. 
Yeah, they're even like over, four years old. Yeah. So you figure, and like I said, I think the only, the big difference between the 8 Plus and the 10 was LCD versus OLED and Touch ID yeah, versus yeah. Face ID. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, the 10, it was the start of this whole new generation of iPhones right. where, you know, the uh, the home button's gone unless you get the, what is it, the SE? Yeah. I think had the yeah. home button. Yeah. Yeah, the but, SE yeah. still has the home button. Yeah. Yeah. So this one here, this is a just looking out over the, the inner bay, like uh, closer into town here where I am. And this was with Spectre and on my 10s max and you know with the with in this case it's just the water which is silky smooth because of the the long exposure and it brings the shoreline on the other side of the bay in closer and it, it isolates just a small part of the tree which was a, a big willow tree and um again compressing the image bringing things in close uh, so if you want to isolate part of the landscape, um, I mean, I've, I've heard of, uh, you know, professional landscape photographers doing this where they get those long lenses, like you mentioned that big 500 mi uh, millimeter mm -hmm. lens and they'll, they'll have a whole mountain range to shoot, but they'll isolate a part of it with this big lens. And that's basically what I'm doing here is I'm just isolating part of the whole scene with my lens. And, um, you know, I was able to not have the shore that I was standing on in the bottom of the frame in the foreground, because I was able to just, I basically put the horizon line just a little bit above center. And uh, in this particular image, there's a reflection of the tree in the water and the sun's reflected in it. And it just, you know, with, with the slow shutter um, ability of specter, it was just kind of made a bit of a surreal looking image. <clears throat> so um, and we will, I'm going to, I'm going to start putting these images in the, um, in the blog post for the website. Okay. Any, any of the images that we talk about, uh, unless there's somebody else's of course, but if there are, then, then we can put them in, but, uh, I'll put these in the, um, in the show notes on the website so that people can see <clears throat> if they, if they don't watch the video on YouTube, they'll still be able to see these, these images and, and what they're, what they're all about. Um, this, this was a front door of a house, um, you know, just downtown where I live and I was able to quickly take this, take the shot and, and keep going without anybody being suspicious of mm. shooting it and just being able to isolate the, the growth of the greenery around the doorway kind of just made the image. Uh, it, had mm -hmm. I got more of the house in, it might not have had the same effect. So, uh, and, and part of this is the editing too. I really darkened it down and uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure which phone this was. It, it like, almost looks a little claustrophobic to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. With, I mean, with, with the, with the, with the greenery kind of crowding in from all sides. Yeah. I, I, you know, now that I think of it, I don't think anybody was living in the house when I took this. Because I mean, it's 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 it looks like it's been neglected. But um, I mean, if they were living there, I, I'd gladly buy them a set of shears so they can do some trimming. Because <laughs> 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 it was it was growing right in where you could almost not even walk up the steps into the house oh, wow. to the door. But uh, you know, again, uh, another use case for the telephoto is is shooting from the street and bringing in detail of of something that. Um, you know, it just saves you having to walk up to it. And this was in a, this was out on the highway, mm -hmm. a little, a little, a little wee church on the side of the road, um, that's closed in the wintertime, but open in the summer, people can go in and, and, you know, pray and worship and do whatever they want. Cause it's just open to the public. Oh, wow. And, uh, this was, um, I was on my way home from, somewhere and i just thought well it looks really neat with all the snow on the ground that's been untouched nobody's walked through it and um you know it was kind of mid to late afternoon in the winter which around here would be two o'clock because it would be dark around 4 30 so um but yeah i just you know i did some with the wide angle 
and I wanted to isolate the church and the big tree beside it. Uh, so I just shot with the telephoto and, and there you have it. And this is another specter shot. Um, this is down by the bay and it was a really, really windy day. I couldn't even, I could not stand outside my vehicle to take this picture because the camera shake would have been just too much. So, um, basically what it is, is waves crashing on the shore. Um, I would say probably in November because there's no leaves on the tree. It's brown season, like stick season type of thing. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> uh, Spectre, where I just tapped the shutter and tapped it again real quick because I didn't want to go too long on it. Mm, and, uh, okay. That way I could get show movement in the waves, but yet not have everything flowing smooth. I wanted to show the roughness of the, right. of the water. But I took this out of my car window, and I had to do a oh. lot of color correction because, of course, the, the window was tinted, and it everything looked like a greenish blue. So I tried to color correct it the best I could, but um, uh, yeah, just, you know, isolating part of the scene again, had I used the mm -hmm. wide angle, I would have got other cars because there was a few other people down there and uh, it, it just makes a big difference between uh, having a, a, a decent looking landscape and one that's kind of mediocre. And I'll uh, just go through one more here. <clears throat> and this is a oh, macro. Wow. My favorite kind of thing to shoot, I think. Um, this is an ant eating away at a rose of Sharon blossom in our backyard. And looking on the screen here, it's not crystal clear, but it's, you know, there's, there's the thing with the telephoto as a compared to the wide. The um, Aperture is not as open. It's not as wide open as the, as the wide right. angle. So that it, 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 it doesn't let as much light in. So you have to probably overexpose just a little bit just to get um, enough light in, but that kind of mm -hmm. causes the shutter to be a little longer. And uh, you, especially with a macro shot, you tend to get a little more movement in whatever you're shooting. And with, you know, with macro on the iPhone, it's so hard to get a sharp shot because the, any little movement is magnified big time right. when you're shooting macro. <clears throat> It'll all be in the book. <clears throat> now, let me ask you real quick. For this one, do you remember what app? Did you use the built-in app somehow, or did you use another app to do the, the macro? Uh, I was probably using mo um, uh, Moment Macro, but with Halide. Oh, and okay. <clears throat> I use Halide because it's got focus peaking. And I was right. able to wait till I could see the ant's head light up in green, which is what the focus peaking does. Um, like it's like a green overlay and it picks up the sharp edges. And when I, when that was green, I, I hit the shutter and mm. again, it doesn't okay. always work because it's, they, they move quickly and the right. phone jiggles a lot. But <clears throat> after probably two dozen shots, I finally got a good shot, you know, good enough that I thought was worthy of, posting the Instagram or something anyway. Mm -hmm. So, wow. Um, now, okay. So telephoto with macro, it brings in stuff a lot closer, obviously than it does with the wide angle. So um, I'm going to cover this a lot in my book that's coming out later this year, but um, the, here's another difference between the telephoto and the wide, excuse me, the, the focal range, which is basically, you know, where you can achieve near focus and far focus before it starts to fall off either way. It, the, on the wide angle, you might have like, say, almost 10 millimeters of range. Whereas with the telephoto, it's about half that. So with the telephoto, with the macro lens on the telephoto, you got to you got so little room to play with to achieve sharp focus on your subject. Mm. And um, I mean, there's no way I could do a shot like this, you know, this ant um, on a tripod where I could keep the camera still and use a timer and all that stuff. <clears throat> if I was using a static object, yeah, it would work out. But um, with a live little, a live little creature like an ant, it, it's very difficult. So, so that's uh you know, that's, that's my tip for 
doing macro um, yeah. with, 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 you can get a lot closer and get a lot, a, a really good look at stuff, but the image quality is slightly less and the, the uh, depth of field is, is a lot smaller than the right. already small depth of field on a wide. Right. And I was just checking out camera plus too, cause that's what I use for macro yeah. and that does not allow you to manually switch cameras. So oh. you're stuck using at least at least for the ten, maybe with a with you know, a newer version. You know version what? I think you're, I think you're right, Dave, because I think I tried that too. Okay. Um, I think it only so, works on the wide. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. if you're looking for it to do something different, you may need to use a different app for if you use let's say like I said, if you use one app that's consistent, and also um, that kind of goes into a second point is if you're taking a photo and it's a the it's starting to get dark. Now, I think Apple's gotten their dark um their low light photography has gotten better with each phone with hardware and mm-hmm. software tweaks. But if you have an older one and it's not really that bright and you start zooming in you do a 2x zoom, you may not be using the telephoto lens with the in base the Apple camera. camera. It, in the Apple <clears throat> camera, because it may say, oh, you went 2X, but it's too dark for us, for Apple, to determine that this is going to be a good photo. So we're just going to use the wide angle and do a digital 2X zoom. Trust us, we're Apple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, if you use yeah. another app, like I'm sure how I, I know Camera Plus, so you can actually say, no, use the telephoto. You can, yeah, you can force you can select force that it. camera, yeah. yeah. But um, if you're yeah. there, there's if a lot of different camera apps that that can do that, yeah. But if you're somebody who primarily uses the um, the built-in camera, and you're in an area where it's like it's starting to get a little darker, you know, it may not be perfect, and it's like, well, wait a minute, this doesn't look like it has the same. Even though I did the two X, or in your case, two point five X. You know, why doesn't it have the same depth? Why isn't it compressed as much? Well, it may be using the wide and doing just the 2X digitally mm-hmm. because that's what Apple, you know, that's Apple's ha- has more handholding with their built-in apps than other apps do and have more of a manual ability to. Right. And so that leads us into portrait mode. Right. Because with portrait mode, it's using both cameras, uh, unless you've got like a 10R or the SE. Right. Maybe the new S, new, the newer version of the SE could probably do portrait mode with the yeah. one lens. Yeah, yeah. Um, but only and, for and that's, people. I mean, but yeah, like that's a lot people. of computational stuff. But only for people, right? Uh, with the multi lens cam uh, phones, you can do like depth images. Like it, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't have to be a person. But with the single lens phones, it needs that facial recognition in order for it to kick in. Right. Um, right. If you're using the built-in app. Now, how yes. light I think can do depth for the single camera for some because they've hard coded in this is a whatever car or this is a, so do depth on this, but you have but they have to had to manually code that in. Or Apple, and like I said, they've gotten better with each version in terms of the coding and the software and the AI, which some people yeah. will, will decry by saying, oh, you're taking the control out of the photographer's hands. And I'm thinking, Apple's going for 90% of the market. They're exactly. not. They're, if, if you are someone who literally is that picky, uh, the, the iPhone will still put out really great photos and there's apps out there that will give you that extra manual. But even serious people on the iPhone, a lot of times, they don't want to deal with all the manual adjustments that you can do. They want to focus on the composition, the lighting, and not necessarily the, you know, the software settings as you're ready to take a picture. So the build an app doesn't allow you to do that. Yeah. Um. So was there anything else you wanted to touch on before we uh, move on to the beta? Kind of related to what you saw with the nose on the car. If you're doing a portrait of a person, not portrait mode, but just a portrait shot of a person, try telephoto. Mm -hmm. Because if you do the wide, all of a sudden, 
that nose may get bigger and bigger. <laughs> the ultra wide will be mammoth, be, just be, and it's optics. It's literally yeah. optics. There's, I mean, this is physics. You right. can't get around physics. Uh, you can with a little bit, like I know polar and other things where you can do distortion, where you can kind of bring in the center of the object to compensate for the lens. But if yeah. you have another lens you can do and you're doing a portrait of a person, and this is what now, if you have three, can, now if you have the three lens like you do, like the Max does or the Pro, which is mm-hmm. not the Max, but the Pro, you can do. Because on mine, where I only have the two, I have to go between the telephoto and the wide. But then you can also do, if you have portrait on, like for yours, you can do it between the wide and the ultra wide. But yeah, and the way Apple but, does I keep it now, forgetting about that. Yeah. <laughs> because a lot of us are used to, this is what I had to do with the two camera system versus the three. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Now, Google, with their built-in algorithm software, has been doing, can do one camera portrait mode. Not as quickly or as easily on device, but because you need the computation and the software behind the scenes, they've had to upload it to the cloud, and which isn't horrible in their case, but it can be done. It's Mm -hmm. not as good, though, as having two cameras that are just a little offset where you can triangulate the difference. Yeah. Now, do they not... Go ahead. We'll say that. Okay, go ahead, because I was going to go into a little bit of 13 talk, too, but go ahead. Okay, I was just going to say, do their their latest Pixel models not do it on device now? The newest ones may do it on device. I'm not sure. Yeah. But, I think they but do. only think, the I latest, but only the latest, because even a right. year or two old one, it was still pushing it up to the cloud. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which All is right, it's, so. it's, it's a strength. That's a strength. But one thing they are, cha- it looks like they're changing with the 13 is the laid out of the camera. To where, if you notice in the back of your camera, I believe you have two vertical and one's kind of off on the side. Yeah. So you have the yeah. two vertical and the one. So The mock-ups, of course, who knows, but the mock-ups, consistent mock-ups, instead of having it like this, where two vertical and one off on the side, but it's going to be a more of a... Yeah, the wide and the telephoto, I think, are going to be diagonal to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so everything's going to be more in a regular, you know, not just a triangle with the one on the side, but a tilted triangle which yeah. could be better for augmented and for portrait mode, depending on you could use now, now that the three cameras look like they're more in a circular versus, yeah. you know, a flat when two things coming off on the side. That and I may think a big with portrait too. Yeah. I think a big part of that is that the what I'm hearing too. is that they're all going to have in body stabilization. Yes. Yeah. Like the, on the 12 pros, the normally it was the wide up here and the and the telephoto down here. Well, this time it's reversed because the telephoto needs to be away from the corner of the phone to make room for the in-body stabilization. Mm-hmm. And I think when they when they're when they're doing that with the uh, uh, with the 13, having them first of all, it's a bigger array, and then right. have having uh, trying to do this without having two kitty corner like this and then the other one down here uh well I, i've been hearing they're going to put stabilization in all all the cameras yeah. now so. if you want to see something if you want to see something a little freaky uh sebastian dewitt uh at, at sdw on twitter on today so we're talking on uh this year july 8th at i don't know how long ago it was it wasn't that long ago um put out a photo of what the camera module looks like. It looks like someone oh, took it out. Yes. I saw that with the it, stabilizer. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it actually shows the stabilizer. And as he described, it looks like it's being bench pressed by a spider. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because that the thing... stabilizer has, they're basically wires that act like springs that come up to actually stabilize and then move it. Yeah. And it's and a little it... freaky looking. <laughs> It does 5,000 corrections per second. Yeah. 
which is like mind boggling. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's crazy, but, uh, um, well, I think we've pretty much covered the, yeah. uh, the telephoto. Mm -hmm. So let's, um, let's talk a bit about the beta. Um, so like I said, I've got it on my 10 S max. Um, I, you know what, I, I, I really don't have a whole lot to say. Okay. Because I haven't really played around with it too, too much. <clears throat> I did try CarPlay with it. And in order to do that, I had to tether it to my 10 S max. So when I did that, um, wherever I was going, the signal dropped off to a really weak signal and, and I lost the connection between the two phones. Oh, so then car, okay. car play quit working. So I wasn't able to really try the navigation and things like that. Um, I know Matt Hoffman said he's really looking forward to seeing how that works out, but yeah. okay. Sorry, I, was, I was, I was trying, I was trying to, I was trying to think, why did you have the tether? Because you have the 10 X mass. It, it, there's no SIM in it. Right. Correct? Exactly. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Th th I just want to clarify that for people too. Is that, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah th there's a, no, there's no, there, yeah. There's no, the reason why it's tethered isn't because of the car place because there's no cell chip in it or no right. active SIM card to the cell to work. So and it's you kind know of what? an iPod touch. Yeah. And CarPlay worked it, because it's mm -hmm. plugged in, right? The right. CarPlay still worked. It was just that the maps and navigation wouldn't update as I was going. Right. right? So I, I could still play music. I could still listen to a podcast, things like that. But I just couldn't do anything where it needed da uh, data, data. Okay. you know, a, a stream of data, right? Mm -hmm. um, so so that was that was CarPlay. Um, one thing I was hoping to get a closer look at was the notifications and how they, what I did do is I set up for, I think it was 8 AM and 4 PM. Basically you can set up, uh, like a notification summary and you can pick the mm. apps that you want, which is kind of cool because that way I can get notifications for like Instagram posts, uh, um, iMessage, um, mm -hmm you know, Facebook messenger, things that, things that, that would normally come in probably every day and you can get those grouped together twice a day. So that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, something I haven't looked too closely at is the focus feature where you can, uh, because it's not my, my daily carry that I take with me out of the house. Um, I, I wasn't really able to say, okay, uh, I'm driving and this is what I want you to you know, this is what I want to come through and this is what I want you to block. So I wasn't able to really try that out too much. Um, so, I mean, this is going to sound like a, a stupid review, but I'm, you know, it's early days for me with it anyway, right. but um, right. <clears throat> it's not too bad for being buggy. It's, it's pretty good. Um, now this is the, this was the original beta for the public beta. Okay. And it was public beta two. They they skipped one uh, because they're keeping the developer beta and the public beta numbers the same. So it was oh, the second okay. developer that beta. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah, it was that a, it was sense. developer okay. beta two, and they just called it public beta two. That way, the numbers will okay. match going forward. Um, something that I did learn that I haven't experienced yet, but I did I did hear that uh, if you create a new note in the notes app on a device with iOS 15 beta, that note may not appear in like, okay, so I've got uh, iOS beta 15 or iOS 15 okay. beta, and then I've got okay. iOS 14.6 or whatever the latest one is. Okay. If I create a note on here in the notes app, it may not show up on here. Ooh. So okay. that's something to, to watch out for. Um, which I'm assuming is a beta issue and everything will be cleared off, hopefully, by the time yeah. we get closer to release. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. Um, and I don't know, maybe that has something to do with, like on iPad and on Mac OS, you can swipe up from the corner to start a new note. on hmm, okay. and, yeah. and, you know, because then, of the then, quick note. Yeah. When, when, and then when you swipe it back down again, bang, it's in your notes app. So mm -hmm. um, it could have something to do with that. I don't know. But uh, all I've heard is that if you start a new note on the iOS 15 beta, it may not appear. They're not saying it won't, but they're saying it may There's not no appear. There's no guarantee. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. So if you're on the beta <laughs> and if it's the only device you've got, just be aware that, you know, that could be a serious thing. If you put it an important note in your phone, it may not show up on your Mac or your iPad or your other and, iPhone or whatever. And, so, And this also kind of goes after the point of betas are there. Mostly the original reason to have betas were software developers and large organizations to make sure mm-hmm. things were stable before the real version came out. It wasn't for your average schmo to go out and just play with the new version. You know, so if you're a large company with 500, going back, let's say to computers, or even, you know, if you have a thousand people using iPhones, you want to make sure the next version, the operating system is going to work with, you know, all the software that you use on a day-to-day basis. So if you use, let's say Salesforce and their, and their mobile app, you want to make sure that's going to work with the new version. Or you want to see what changes are coming. So you want to be able to test that out, not say, like I said, you're doing it on a backup device or a device that's basically a a nice iPod touch because that doesn't have a cell signal. But if you don't have a backup, if you only have one device, I think we both agree, unless you're really adventurous and you don't mind fixing it yourself because this is nothing, you know, I'm sure... The only thing Apple may be able to do is say, well, we can blow you up and search it from fresh. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, last year, the year before, maybe the year before that, I was putting betas on my only iPhone that I had at the time. I didn't have a spare one to use. And, you know, funny enough, when when WWDC came out, I said I wasn't going to put it on mm-hmm. my device. And then, like, I realized I got this spare Back one up. yeah so i thought oh heck yeah i'm gonna put it on <laughs> yeah so uh, but yeah it, it's um you know apple put this public betas out because if they can get possibly millions of people using the beta think of how quickly mm-hmm. how much more uh quickly they can get the bugs right. worked out right right so um but it's good yeah, to that's, know that's, it's good to go in with your eyes open saying the reason Apple has this out here is not for your benefit. It's really for their benefit. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. So now, one thing that, oh, go, go ahead. Let's see. We still have people out there saying, I, uh, I, put, I put this beta on here. My phone crashed. You're like, yeah, it's a beta. It's going to yeah. crash. That's it's right. an early beta. It's beta two. It's, you know, we still got two plus months because, you know, even though the iPhone probably will be released, will be announced probably second Tuesday in September, it's mm-hmm. going to be a week plus on top of that before the final version of iOS 15 comes out. And of course, you know, they'll immediately have 15.1 ready to go for any bug fixes <laughs> yeah. or oh, features yeah. they want to add. So, yeah. you know, they're doing this as a, you're a tester. Just remember that you're a tester with this beta. Yeah. There's a feedback app built right into the yeah, beta yeah. and it's there for a reason. Yeah. Uh, so one thing I did I did look at, but I haven't really played around with too much, is the new memories feature in photos, mm, okay. which I think is is kind of cool because you could actually put bonafide songs to your music um, mm-hmm. that you know they 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 present you with that already done, and I haven't tried editing to see how they look and all that stuff. Uh, one thing I will say is the share button is disabled oh i cannot share a memory from ios ios 15 beta and i'm sure there's a good reason for that because you know whether it's copyright issues for this music that they're Mm. using or whatever maybe they don't have it all sorted out yet i don't know but or maybe they just don't want maybe they just don't want things put out there yet but the the share sheet for at least for me anyway um it's grayed out it's there but it's grayed Mm. out you can't you can't share a memory. Can you can you save a video? No, because that's how you saved it. You okay. use the share sheet okay. to save the video, okay. and you can't even do that. Now, Ooh. the only thing I haven't tried is doing a screen recording of one to I see. I would say works, a screen recording, but yeah, which it, I've it had may to not do pick up the audio. Twice. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've actually yeah. had to. I've had to do that with sometimes when I've done memories, and for whatever reason, it just doesn't export well. So I've had to do a screen recording and then crop the video so it's. You know, so it's not cropped in and that that audio works. But like you said, 
you're getting in the copyright and who pays what and you know because if you save yeah. it you can put it on youtube because and then all of a sudden youtube has a strike against you because you use the song that apple licensed but you didn't license right yeah exactly you know? and th this well I'll say this was forget how many 10 plus years ago i put a little bit and this is before memories and everything else um i put a little photo slideshow together when Ruth went to Philadelphia for her, for her job at the time. And I did a crappy recording. Uh, basically, I played the U a YouTube video and then did held my phone up to it to record the audio that way of Philadelphia Freedom. Oh, yeah. And using, <clears throat> I mean, it was, it was bad. It was, it, it uh, by the way, kids ask your ask your parents. It was like doing a <laughs> um, a cassette recording off the radio. Yes, or oh, it was it was significantly that. worse. Yeah, <laughs> but it was significantly worse than that. Yeah, you know, it was like, oh, I'm going to record this, so I got my record up there, and I have my little tape player, and I'm going to put the play player in front of the speakers, I'm going to hit record, and I'm going to put the needle down on the record and have it record. It was that quality, but I still had a YouTube mark against me because. It noticed it was a copyright song. It didn't have the rights to it. It said, oh, yeah. by the way, you have a this. You don't have the rights. We're stripping the audio out of here. Oh, this is this is your first strike. So we're not going to do anything against you. But this is just heads up. We're taking this off of your video. So they didn't give you a takedown notice. They just stripped the audio. No, they stripped the audio. Oh. OK, I don't hmm. I don't think I was monetizing it. And that's back right. when you could try to monetize, even if you were a tiny little person. Oh, yeah. Now, you know, now to monetize, you have to have so many thousands of few followers and this and this and this, even before they even let you start monetizing now. Right. So, hmm. but yeah, so, and that's, like I said, 10 plus years ago where people, companies weren't as um, sue happy yeah, as yeah. they are now. For like, yeah. oh, here's a YouTube channel. Here's a YouTube video with 20 views. Sue them. They're stealing our money. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So one thing I, I was, I'm curious about, and I don't know yeah. if it'll work. It, like, say, if you sent me three or four pictures at a time through through iMessage, I don't mm -hmm. know if they would come in for me um, grouped together, mm. you know, how, where you could slide through them. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that has to be from an iOS 15 device. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll try that sometime yeah. and, and just to see how it comes through on, on this one. But, um, uh, you know, that's, that's another feature that I'm looking forward to trying out too. So, right. <clears throat> but um, yeah, that's about all I got on the beta. Okay. So uh, well, early days, still early days. It, yeah. Yeah. It's early days. And um, sometimes my spare time is devoted to sitting down trying to write this book, but, Otherwise, I would have more time to play around with it. Yeah. Uh, didn't really notice anything in the camera. Um, uh, I, I can't can't recall anything in the camera. Uh, now it's different, laid out slightly different because it's the 10s Max, not the 12 Pro Max. Mm, okay. um, you know, so I don't know. Uh, I'll I'll play around with it. I'm sure, but uh, hopefully there'll be another beta come out soon with uh you know more oh, things yeah. to try and see what we can get so mm -hmm. i guess that's uh i guess we got ourselves a show we do and uh yeah so tell everybody where they can find you sure you can find me on instagram and twitter is prof pod and on the iphone ography uh, facebook group and on the MeWe uh r4 ipc group as dave Podner. And we'll put links right there at the bottom of the screen for those. You can find me on uh, uh, Twitter at McMillan underscore photo on Instagram, McMillan photo. And um, that blue Venza you found, you saw in the, in the photos, if you're watching the video, you can, it's on Instagram at the blue Venza. Um, uh, let's see where else. Uh, the, um, there's the iPhoneography, uh, artful iPhoneography community, which is on MeWe, and that's at artfulipc.club. The website for the podcast is iphonography.ca. And um, all the anytime we do a video for YouTube, the, the videos are embedded right in the post now. 
Um, but you could also get the audio from Anchor, Spotify, um, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, anywhere you can get a podcast, you could probably get the um, the audio for it. Mm-hmm. Just just look for iPhoneography Podcast and it should show up. So um, I guess that's it. Thanks, Dave. Uh, yeah. Thanks so much, Greg. And again, thanks to that, Joe for la- for two weeks ago oh, yeah. for coverage. Yes, absolutely. And um, you know, the, the Tiny Shutter alumni guys are always welcome on any time they can. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, you know, we're so grateful that they're able to fill in for us when we can't make it. And um, otherwise, if if uh, if one of us couldn't make it and nobody else could make it to fill in, well, I guess we'd have to miss that show because I don't know about you, but I couldn't stand here and ramble on by myself for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, you know thanks to those guys um, we really do appreciate it and um, I guess we will see you all on the next one have a great week everyone